Yes, yes, y'all. It's your boy DJ Cliff. Back at it again. It's been a minute, man. Another episode of Cliff Notes. You know where we get together and chop it up with with people who are um, doing good things in their community. Um, big shout out to everybody who's 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 come through. Everybody who's been following the journey on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of that. Remember, you can uh, subscribe to the podcast, the Cliff Notes podcast, on iTunes and on Stitcher and on SoundCloud. Uh, or on the DJ Cliff uh, web, web website, www.djcliff.com. All kinds of ways to connect and stay involved, stay connected to everything that's happening. And then, of course, shout out to uh, all the people who are, you know, working on helping us get that sponsor because we're trying to we trying to keep this thing moving. All right, I ain't going to get into a whole bunch of stuff because this one has been a long time coming, way too long coming. We've been working on trying to connect for a minute, a long time. <laughs> and this cat has been um, busy doing stuff, and it's so cool to finally have an opportunity to sit down and chop it up. Um, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Vinny Dwayne, what up? Hey, what's good, man? I'm good, brother. What's I'm up? good. What's Look, up? like I said, man, it's been way too long that we've been, uh, you know, trying to connect and um, yeah, and just build this thing, and and, and it's finally here. Uh huh. Yeah. How you doing? Glad, baby? glad to be here, man. I know. <laughs> I know. I've been trying to get down here. <laughs> I've been trying, bro. Um, trying. You have been, um, you've been, you've been here in Portland. Came back. I don't. Let, 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 let's let's kind of go back and start from the beginning, man. For, yeah. for people who who just may not be familiar, let everybody know. Um, you know your journey, like where you know how it all got started for you. Um, it really, it, like as far as like me getting into the scene and stuff like that, it started in like two thousand and nine with my. Uh, my first mixtape solitary i released that when i was in chicago and um and yeah and it just and then i dropped a, uh, one of the songs on there was called damn uh and then i got a lot of recognition on youtube and stuff like that it was on world star and everything and and people had just started hitting me up yo this, who's this dude from st john's Cause not a lot of people knew who i was and and then they kind of gravitated towards that and ever since then it kind of like locked in to me being this kid from St. John's that wants to make it out, that has like has a dream to like you know what I'm saying about get get my mom a house you know what I'm saying every all that was all has always been a part of my music is just like coming up from people that look at the north like like niggas don't make it out the north you know what I'm saying and and I was trying to change that they perspective on that yeah ever since like but it's always been that even before that project I kind of started when I was like 13 when I was 13 I was recording. Um, at a studio called Urban Soul in St. John's. And I had, re uh, the way I got into that studio, I was like walking down the street, I was passing it by, like right by that subway, like right there off of like New York and Pheasant or something like that. I forgot what street it is. But I was walking by and I seen this big studio and it's, it said Urban Soul. And I went in there and I seen my first like actual uh, studio session with like a nice setup and everything. And then I went up to the engineer and I said, hey, what I got to do to get in here? Uh, check me out. Y'all should, should fuck with me. And then so I spit on this freestyler, like I spit on this verse that I had. And then he, I think he seen potential in me. His name was King Sean. And um, he pretty much said, like, what do you do every day after school? And I was like, nothing. I just write music and stuff. And he was like, well, if you come in here and sweep up the garage, sweep up the whole venue, uh, clean everything out in the studio, like two, uh, four days a week, you know what I'm saying? I'll give you two hours of studio session. Uh, every Friday and then that's kind of how I started then my first song was called St. John Soldier and and ever since then that's when I was like taking music like super seriously but I've always been been rapping and stuff like that even back when I was like six years old and stuff like that that's but crazy. yeah that's crazy B chopping it up with Vinny Dwayne and it's funny because I I you've had you've it's almost like you've had this um the, the this this persona is not the right word but like everybody knows who you were everybody knew what you were doing everybody like bef before the latest album dropped everybody was waiting on the album and you've done i think a really cool job of um of creating buzz for yourself showing the skills that you have but yet doing it in a way where um you 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 were you were in the scene but when you performed or when you put out music it was very well thought out mm -hmm. you know it was very well 
Uh, I, and then obviously very well received by people. Um, so you talk about writing since you were young. It's like you've had this, you've been working on this process yeah. through the years, which is dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's what's up, man. Chopping over Vinny Dwayne. So, um, so to build, so to build your buzz here in Portland, um, and then uh, you mentioned, you know, you released you released music when you was out in, when you was in Chicago. So how'd you get from Portland to Chicago? I got to Chicago on a full ride scholarship, the Gates Millennium Scholarship. Like when I was in high school, um, at first, like I didn't really care about school, you know what I'm saying? And then um, when I was in middle school, I didn't give a fuck about school or nothing like that or like nothing about academics it was all music and then when i got to high school i got a mentor his name is hanif fazo he does like a lot of equity work and stuff like that and he and he's like super connected to like uh like um making people realize what's really going on in the system and how the school system is all like like if we we only serve a certain you know what i'm saying group of students and, and the minorities are being left out and they're not being treated with the right you know what i'm saying like uh opportunities and resources that they what they need and and he's been always somebody that's been in my life since I was 13 years old and when I got into high school he was like uh I went to a camp called Step Up Camp and he was just like why not pursue your education while do music you know what I'm saying like why not go to school into in a bigger city and and shine there while you're doing music so that's what I set out to do I told myself when I was a freshman in high school I'm gonna get into a big uh, city. I'm gonna do music. I'm gonna get a scholarship. I'm not gonna pay for no school. And then I ended up getting a Bill Gates scholarship um, that pays for my uh, education all the way up to my PhD. So when I was 17, I got that scholarship. And then from there, I went to Chicago and and just started like, you know what I'm saying, grinding. I found an engineer out there. I was like traveling like to the suburbs to record with who I thought, I always thought was the best engineer. His name is Chris Barnett. Like he's doing big things now. He was in his mom's basement, and he just he's been guiding me and helping me ever since then. And that's what took me out to Chicago. That's what that's what the first leap was. That's craziness, B. Yeah, it's and it's dope because there was an opportunity that presented itself, and you like you grasped it and took hold of it, mm -hmm. and and you know are running with it, making it happen. The 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 you know, the next part of that, though, is is that now you've come back home to Portland mm -hmm. and you mentioned, you know, someone was a mentor and they they took hold and, and sort of showed you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing the same thing. Yeah, I'm doing some of the similar same work, working with youth at risk youth for the same program for Step Up. And and it's, it's just another thing that feels right to me, because. Without those people that was in my life when I was in high school, then I don't know where I would be. So I want to make sure, like, it was hard. Today was my last day at work, and it was hard saying goodbye. And and, and them seeing and me telling them, like, I'm about to go back to Chicago and pursue the music thing. And then them being supportive, like, go do what, I, go do what you got to do. This is your dream. Keep chasing that. And um, it was just hard saying goodbye because, I, like, with with the step up it's like really hands on relationship with us we're in their lives we come to their house you know what i'm saying if they ain't got food we try to provide them with food like we really go out on that limb to try to help support them yeah. and help them see and help them have like positive thoughts and and to like because a lot of our stories like growing up in an area in a low-income area like it feels like our story is written out for us already and it's like it's like we can we can change that we can take control over our stories you know what i'm saying like and we can write our own stories we don't have to uh follow by what we see around us and stuff like that what they've given us what what they've put us in you know what i'm saying yeah. and and yeah and i just want to remind youth that that there's opportunities out there and you can be your higher self and stuff like that that's what's up man chopping up with Vinny duane um here on the cliff notes podcast so you know, kind of going back then to your music, a lot of what you just spoke to is what you hear when when people listen to your music. The fact that there is another way, mm -hmm. and you know, when I I was listening to I was listening to um to the latest project Saint John Scholar, and it's funny because listening to that album, there's a scent. To me, there's 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 almost two sides to the album. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, there's the storytelling side that really speaks to a lot of the things that you talked about, what you what you see in life, mm -hmm. and um, how you respond to that. 
And there's another side of the album that just seems super poetic almost, you know, like, um, like your, your style, your style of, of writing and, and your style of delivery. Um, that's, that's, that's how I perceive it. How would you, how would you describe, you know, yourself as an MC? Um, yeah, it's just like documentary type rap. Um, just what I see, what's going on and. It's not really like it's not I wouldn't say it's political or anything or or like super super conscious. I just think it's like my truth and what I and what I see and I th- yeah the flow is I think the flow is poetic. I use a lot of like metaphors and stuff like that. I, f- I feel like that's the best way to try to connect with somebody is giving them an image of of what's in your head like in the best way possible. So I try to when I write music, I don't write with a pen or anything. I just memorize it and by that I try to with the words that I say, I want to make sure that I see those words in my head so the listener can see those words as well. That's what's up, man. Yeah. It's funny because you know you speak to that and and of course there's so many people who talk about artists um who do that like man, yeah, he don't even write stuff down. He just mm-hmm. he just spit out of his out of his head and that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. That's crazy. Back in the day, you know, when I thought I was going to be the next great rapper, I was writing everything down. Yeah. <laughs> like on the booth with my notebook. That's what's That's up. tight, too, though. That's, like, that's a gift itself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Chopping up with Vinny Dwayne. So, um, the late, we talked about the latest project, St. John Scholar. Um, that was a project that I remember hearing about for a minute um, before it came out. Mm-hmm. You worked on that for a while. Yeah. Speak on that process, man. Speak on your writing process and... Um, you know, we live in a we live in a time now where I think it's a blessing that people have the have the ability to um go in their bedroom studio and put together a project and then put it up on SoundCloud or put it up on Bandcamp and put it out and then the next week do that again and then the next week do that again. Yeah. Um talk about your process and and um the idea of 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 waiting and not just or maybe not waiting, but the idea of creating that process or, or creating the album. That that the St. John Scholar, it, yeah, it did take a long time to come out. Um, that process was crazy for me at that point in my life because I started the project right after I got into that car accident. I got into that near fatal car accident, and um, so and wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. So we let's let's go back, man, and 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 tell that story for folk who aren't who aren't up on. Well, I got into a, a like a crazy car accident. I was. Um, yeah, it gets kind of it gets deep. I was um, pretty much pinned into the car. Um, one of my friends was ejected out the back window. Um, I can't remember the the actual crash, but I do remember the jaws of life pulling me out, and and I ended up. I wake up. I all I remember is waking up in the hospital, um, and the doctor said I should have been dead, or you know what I'm saying, and. And then I'm like tripping out. I'm like, "Where's my friend at?" They said he's upstairs. They said he should have been dead. He had he had bro- uh, broke his neck. And he was like a centimeter away from being paralyzed, you know. And yeah, and that was a big learning curve for me. It was it was something that I had to get through. Um, it took like six months to recover. Like I broke every bone in the left side of my body. I broke right now there's a metal rod in my, my, my femur, so I walk with a limp sometimes now and I like broke all my ribs, my collarbone. It was really a, a depressing time for me. I was like taking all the oxys that they was giving me and stuff like that and and coming off those was like super hard, like withdrawing and stuff like that and everything was dark. I still had another semester of school left. And um, I had some of the songs already recorded for the St. John Scholar. But then so I um, so after about six or eight months, I told myself, like, I got to finish school. You know what I'm saying? I got to go back and get the degree. I got the I got a scholarship and they was going to continue funding funding it. So I go back there and I have like a semester left with my uh, my scholarship for that semester because it goes to your Ph.D., but you only got a certain amount of time to finish your bachelor's Mm -hmm. so i um i get out there i finished that semester i wasn't really in the writing zone yet because i was still like trying to bounce back in school and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and um and 
So I finish up with school, finish that semester, I graduate, you know what I'm saying, and everything's good. So it's like, what am I going to stay in Chicago or come back to Portland? Mm -hmm. And I still have to finish the project and stuff like that. So I have to figure out how to find myself living in Chicago, which is hard without the scholarship and going to school and stuff like that. So I stay with my auntie on the south side where it's like crazy, a lot of low income everything is like run down it's just surrounded by nothing but black people it's just way different than being in portland and stuff like that so i was going through like trying to get eat you know what i'm saying get studio time like going through beats and stuff like that and i had already been promoting the album you know what i'm saying so i was already saying st john scholar st john scholar and so but i was going through that at the same time so it took a really long time for me to like really get back into my rhythm and stuff like that right. and then i finally finished the project and um and then i finally finished the project and now i'm thinking about how i'm going to release it who i'm going to release it to and stuff we, we released it through i had been talking to some independent labels who wanted to work with me and stuff and nothing like really was going my way you know what i'm saying i finished the project like when i started got back started i, I finished it in like maybe six months it took me six months but i was i had been promoting it for like two years right, so right. but when i got back in the groove then you know what i'm saying i finished it and so i'm i'm waiting on uh people to help me release it and stuff like that and and since that was taking so long i decided to like release it in the streets um uh, come back to portland and release it like hard copies do shows and do open mics you know what i'm saying like um sell the album on the streets just until i get somebody to help me release it roll it out online and stuff like that but it, i ended up just uh releasing it myself after like six months or already pushing it and stuff like that so that's what made it take so long and yeah that's what's up man chopping up with Vinny duane um so the the album is 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 everywhere now it's on spotify it's on itunes it's i mean everybody can go in and, mm -hmm. and copy title yeah title oh that's what's up yeah okay okay um so uh it's through the process of being in in Portland, coming up in Portland um, as an artist, and um, then leaving Portland and and going to Chicago, what was the you know what was the what was the perception of of hip hop in Portland? Like when you when you went to Chicago, and people saw your saw your your talent, and mm -hmm. you was like, yeah, I'm from Portland. Were people like? Are you from where? Yeah, at first it's always like, oh, you from Portland? There's black people in Portland, you know what I'm saying? But it's, but once they got to know me, they realized that, you know what I'm saying, it don't really matter where you're from. If you a solid dude, you're a real dude, and you just be yourself, you know what I'm saying, then they're going to embrace you anywhere. Like, you got cats in Chicago who are from, like, the suburbs, and they trying to be, like, a drill rapper and shit, and they're not respected by the, the like, the drill rappers in Chicago. Like, because they not being themselves. But if you got a dude come in from anywhere in the world and he being himself, they gonna respect that because, you know what I'm saying, you just being you. And then they could feel that realness, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't really about, it kind of, they kind of like labeled me as like Portland rapper, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they were still vibing with me and still rocking with me because I feel like the music was, spoke to them. That's it spoke up. to them too out there. I got a lot of uh, supporters in Chicago. That's what's up, that's what's yeah. up. Um, you know, it's funny because as I as I have had an opportunity to build with people in a local scene and, and even the perception of people in Portland, their perception of their own city has been, I, I found, has been interesting. And um, right now it feels like there is a, 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 it sounds almost corny, but almost like a new wave of artists who are coming up and coming up together and yeah. supporting one another in a, in, yeah, a, yeah. in a really, really large way, which is dope because I think when I first... Um, when I first started connecting with people, there were a lot of established crews and people were kind of doing things on their own. But now you really see see people kind of coming up um, together and supporting one another. So as someone who is from the scene, in the scene, what is your perception of the scene in Portland as it stands right now? I think it is a different kind of feeling than what it was, you know what I'm saying, when I was like a kid watching it, you know what I'm saying? As a kid, it was, it was like... Um, it kind of sounded like everybody was on a one certain type of wave, one certain type of like a West Coast California sound. You know and I'm saying that's what I remember. Um, but now I feel like it's a, it's a new type of be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Be a creative. You know what I'm saying? Like support each other type type feeling. You know what I'm saying? And 
and and that's cool. And that's cool to see, you know. So, no doubt. No doubt. And every and every year, I feel like there's something new that that happens that comes out, and it's always a lot of good talent, you know. People have been coming from like LA, been living here and stuff like that, and they bring in a new flavor here, and it's tight. It is crazy because um, there are there. I mean, there are established artists, people who have been making music for a minute, and who have, who have had levels of success in areas outside of Portland, who have decided to come to Portland and make Portland home. Yeah. Which is, I mean, and, and not putting it on blast. Like a lot of people don't even realize that they're here, but they've they've chosen to make Portland home, which I think is interesting. You know, um, whether they, whether it's because they feel that creative, they see that creative spirit here in Portland, or or what it is, but people have have really sort of gravitated to this area. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done some collaboration on, uh, on 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 the album on St. John Scholar. People that um, I mean, people need to go check out the project because mm-hmm. it's 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 dope sonically. Um, in terms of production, um, who did you reach out to pr- for production on the on the project? Well, I have like a production exclusive like production team that I, I worked with uh, um, Bob Wire and they from North Carolina, Bob Wire and and, and a, a producer named IP who I've been working with since like since the project before that it was since the very beginning actually uh, since Solitary I've been working with them. Okay. And, and and IP pretty much produced the entire thing on on Saint John Scholar as 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 well as uh, DJ Cones. He's from Canada, so I got like a select few of producers that I just mainly work with. That's you know, cool. the you know that that idea. Oftentimes, you you hear people who who do that. Um, you think that those are people who you have connected with, and they they really have a sense for what you do as an MC, or you just have a sense for what they do as producers, or is it, or does it go even deeper than that, in terms of building with the, with that with those individuals? I think um, I think I they have an idea in their head, like they have an idea of what kind of flow needs to be on here. They have an idea of what kind of feel. You know what I'm saying, and I've just been uh, lucky enough to be that artist to fit what what's going on with them. That's what's up. Because every time, like with IP, he'll send me a beat, and I and and I rap to it. He raps as well, but he doesn't like put out any music or anything like of him rapping or anything. So he he'll make a beat, and then he'll he'll know what he wants to hear. Yeah. I'll take that beat, I write, write rap something to it, put in a voice memo, and send it to him. He'll like dog, like that's exactly what I was hearing <laughs> to this beat. You know what I'm saying and. I mean, that's how it's been. I feel like it's just like the, the way the universe works is going to connect you with things that just feels right. And that's how it happened. That's how it happens with me and connecting with producers. That's what's up, man. Chopping up with Vinny Duane, man. It's the Cliff Notes Podcast. Looking at what you've done in the scene, sort of coming up in the scene here in Portland, like we're talking about artists who've, who've moved into the area um, and just continuing to build in the area, um, there's other there's other people who've come in and have are looking for this space, you know, trying to find trying to find how they fit in in into the Portland scene. And you've had an opportunity to, to collaborate with people and make some good music. Yeah, um, is that something that uh, was just natural, organic, where talented people just 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 gravitate to talented people? Do people seek you out because of what you've done and sort of the foothold that you have in the city? Yeah, it was kind of a. Uh... Well, my first collaboration with somebody from out of town, he, he we, we uh, kicked it with the same group. Yeah, and the music I kind of passed through through them in that circle. Then he was like, oh, yeah, so we got to do something. We got to work. And then I came from Chicago to Portland, met him, you know what I'm saying? And and I was like, yeah, let's, I'll fuck with your music. Yeah. Let's, um, let's do something. I'm going to send you something. I'm going to send you something that I feel like we can both relate to on and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. That's how it happened with that that artist. That's what's up. It's funny because... I um, I met uh, Chill Crew, so John Bells and PC, uh, through through the radio show Walking Through the Neighborhood, and mm-hmm. they came through, and they brought their producer with them, who yeah. was Stuart Villain. Yeah, that's how that's how I met Stewie, and Stewie and I just you know sort of built through the years. Stewie's done one of the Cliff Notes podcasts, good dude, and so then I had Stewie come through, and then he brought. Uh, he brought uh, Trey Rudeau and he brought Teaspoon, and so that's how I got to meet the Sore Loser Gang. Yeah, and um, just really dug what those cats was doing in terms of you know Stewart's production, of course. Yeah, and then um, you know the MCs that were a part of that, and then I remember I don't remember where I saw it or how it came came out, 
But something came out that when you were coming back to Portland, Vinny Duane was associated with Sore Losers. And I was like, oh, it's about to be on. <laughs> Just so dope, man. Um, were those were those artists that you, those those Portland artists, um, people that you had built with or were connected with before you left to go to go off to Chicago? Yeah, uh, Trey and Spoon and, like, yeah, Trey and Spoon always been, like, Trey's my cousin. Trey's my blood cousin. Oh, word, okay. And, and Spoon is somebody I've always looked up to, even as a young cat, you know what I'm saying, as a shorty. And and I've, there's always been a relationship there, you know what I'm saying? And um, they wanted me to join Star Losers for a while and stuff like that. But yeah. me, it's like, I've never been somebody to, like, to join a, a group, you know what I'm saying? I've been in a group. Yeah. It didn't really work out too yeah. well, you know what I'm saying? And like I even have friends in Chicago that's like it's blowing up right now right. and and they wanted me to be in a in a group, you know right. what I'm saying? And I just never really, you know what I'm saying, been like a, I've been always like a solo type of type of artist. I never felt like my story or or my um sound was like could be like put into a group or anything right. like that. Right. But but Trey's my cousin and so he we was all out one night. We was kicking it, having drinks. It was me, Trey, and Bogan, and and they was talking to me about being in the losers and everything. And too many drinks, we was drunk. And next thing you know, I'm on social media talking about uh, Trey on social media talking about Vinny, the newest member of the sort of losers. <laughs> and then you know what I'm saying from there, I just took that and ran with it. And yeah, I'm not really like a um, I'm, I don't rap a whole bunch of shit besides like the North and and where I come from and my homies and stuff like that. So you don't hear me saying losers or nothing like that. But those, like, I fuck with losers. And I fuck with you. Yeah. 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 That's what's up. I mean, yeah, something like that. My people is in the North, you know what I'm saying? My people is my people, my family. Gotcha. And that's what it really is. That's what it means to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Um, there's a there's a, there's a a song on, um, on the project that you did with Mike Bogan, Easy. Mm-hmm. Dude, it gets major rotation play on Welcome yeah, to the Neighborhood. I love, yeah, I love that song. That song is so <laughs> ridiculously dope, man. Yeah. Who did the production on that one? IP. Okay. The North Carolina cat. <sighs> IP, he's, they grew up, all terrain music, they grew up with, uh, they were all one, uh, uh, it was a label, and J. Cole was a part of that. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they was all in North Carolina like years ago, you know what I'm saying, trying to come up and everything, and it was Bob Wire, uh, 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 IP, I think it was IP, uh, uh, Nerve Wreck, Nerve Wreck, Nerve Wreck is the big homie, you know okay. what I'm saying, like, okay. he's cool, you know what I'm saying, uh, shout out to Bob Wire and everybody, but yeah, it was all them, so IP comes up under, like, a, a J. Cole type, you know what I'm saying, and so, so yeah, that's where that flavor comes from. That's what's yeah. up, man. Um, the, the, the contrast between your delivery and Mike's delivery, and the track is just so ridiculously yeah. dope. Mike I mean, did this thing on there. It, really, really. Yeah, I mean, just his uh, best verse ever. Just, 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 just super, super nice, man. Yeah. Um. Once again, I just had to tell you, that's like I love that track, man. Yeah. It's so, so dope. I knew, I like when I heard it. You know what I'm saying? When I made the song, when I wrote it, or wrote my, uh, and then with the uh, the hook is what made me say, okay, let me send this to Bogan because she's from California or whatever, mm -hmm. and. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like it ain't easy for him to make that move. It ain't easy taking that trip. But, you know what I'm saying? When you got hate, you know what I'm saying? I feel like he could relate to that story. So I was like, okay, I think Bogan can kill this shit. Me and Trey has been supposed to have been doing something. Trey would be like, send me something. I told Trey to send me something. But I don't ever feel like it's, it's right. You know what I'm saying? I want it to be right. You know what I'm saying? So I sent that one to Bogan, and he killed that shit. I know he could, I know he could kill that. That's what's up, man. Chopping up with Vinny Duane. Um, like, like so many... Um, like life, the way that life is, um, you know, people people make moves and 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 um, things change and uh, relationships uh, rise and fall and and uh, like you mentioned, um, you know, you're you're you've, you're you're connected with with cats and sore losers, some by blood, some just by relationship, mm -hmm. um, but uh, also there's you know there there have been uh, unfortunate. Uh, circumstances where people just don't connect no more. Yeah. Um, I think that, like I said, when I heard that, I thought, wow, like, like you and Mike get together, y'all could do some stuff. Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying. Like, yeah. we had uh, 
Shady Four Five, a guy from there, willing to fund an entire project with me and Bogan. Like you know, what I'm saying he wanted to like back it. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, I believe that. Yeah, they wanted us to do an EP. So yeah, I like the sound too. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not gonna happen. Nah, that's probably not gonna happen. I mean, yeah, it's probably not gonna happen. Yeah. It. Yeah. Just my morals and my values. That's just not gonna. Ha- I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't feel like you would want to do that, and I don't think I'd want to do that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So just so people know, because I know people are like lined up waiting on that when that <laughs> album to drop. So, um, so the the news dropped. I was I was doing the radio show this just this past Saturday night, and shout out to Brookfield Deuce. Brookfield Deuce came through, and he was shout like, out to Brookfield. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah, fuck with him. That's a good dude for real. He was like, "Yo, um, Vinny just put word out, man. He's about to, he's about to, he's about to bounce." And I was like, "What you talking about, mm-hmm. man? You going back to Chicago, man?" Yeah, I got to, I got to. I've been, I've been like, I always knew I was gonna go back to Chicago, Chicago or L.A. or something like that, or New York. You know what I'm saying? Where where Bob Wire at and everybody. Um, but yeah, so I gotta. I got to make a move. I, f- I don't feel like there's nothing else I could do here in Portland. I feel like I've done like pretty much everything. I've gotten recognition by all the blogs and stuff like that or the, the newspaper sites and stuff like that. And and I feel like I've reached a plateau of like, you know what I'm saying? Like I I do like, um, I was doing like open mics, you know what I'm saying? Going to open mics and open mics and a, a different open mic at night. I was I opened up for Lupe Fiasco, you know what I'm saying? I did the National Hip Hop Day, the first, you know what I'm saying, the Hip Hop Day where we got recognition from like all the news channels and there was a lot of commotion and a whole bunch of stuff about that. And I still feel like like my value as an artist is still like venues that like offer me like a hundred dollars to to headline a show. And I don't feel like and when I do a show, I feel like I bring I'm 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 with a band now, you know what I'm saying? And and, and I make sure my band is taken care of i pay them you know what i'm saying and and so like if you you're offering me a hundred dollars to headline at a show i have to pay my band so i'm almost making negative you know what i'm saying money i'm paying you know what i'm saying out of my pocket so it's like i don't feel like uh artists are valued here you know what i'm saying so it's like i just got to go do something different and hop in the scene where it's like you know what i'm saying and where people are actually like respecting the craft and stuff like that. And is that something that um, that you'd heard from other artists before, before you sort of had that experience or came to that realization um, on your own as an artist in terms of the scene not necessarily supporting local artists? And the reason I ask that is, is because um, I've been I've been in a situation where I've I've had an opportunity to have this very conversation mm-hmm. before. Yeah, where um, artists say pretty much what you just said. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I've done everything that I can do here, and um, artists have left the city and gone on to do to do other things. Was that something that that you'd heard? You know, when you were coming up, um, I don't. I didn't really hear that because, mm-hmm. like, before I left, before I like when I was in high school and stuff like that, I I didn't know what it was like to do a uh, like a show at Mississippi Studios or a show at Holocene. I always thought it was like you go to the Roseland and and you perform and you get paid. You know what I'm saying? And you have this large crowd. I thought that's what it was supposed to be. But when you're an independent artist and you're on the come up, you're doing a little. You're doing like more intimate uh, venues like Mississippi Studios and all that stuff. And I, it's just I, I feel like they have to work something out in their budget where they can help the artists invest into their craft more and i feel like it's on the artist end too you have to bring that crowd out but it's like you it's like you have to do a lot of shows to invest in you to yourself to have that money to invest to yourself like like a hundred two dollars two hundred dollars a show isn't really enough especially if i'm if i'm coming out with a band and stuff like that and, and i'm trying to give them a live you know experience you know what i'm saying it's like I don't know if they're, I don't know, I don't know. Because we're, as artists, we're headlining, we're bringing people there, we're telling people to come, you know what I'm saying, network, vibe with us, buy drinks, you know what I'm saying? And it's just not, that's a lot on our end to support this venue, even though it's like love, you know what I'm saying, I, I, 
I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, the venues offering me a chance to uh, give me that platform to, you know what I'm saying? But it's like there has to be more uh, to invest in future projects and stuff like that. We can't just keep bringing all of our people to your show and or to your venue and, and, and accepting such a small amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Because so, I'm really trying to invest. I'm trying to, like, you know what I'm saying, work on this next project. And, right. Right. Chopping up with Vinny Duane. You know, I was talking to uh, to Hanif a couple of years ago before he left to go to New York. And um, I believe it was Hanif. It was either Hanif or Toy. And it's a shame that, like, I can run off. Oh, yeah, this person was here and they left and this person was here and they yeah. left. And, um, we're just sharing the fact that coming up that way in Portland where, like you mentioned, as an independent artist, you have to hustle. You've got to mm -hmm. create your own um uh, promotional material you have to promote your show you have to you know do all of these things as an artist then mm -hmm. when you go to a different city you know how to do all that stuff you know how to do a lot of the things that you would hire a promoter to do for you mm -hmm. did you have an opportunity when you were in chicago at all to see where that would be of benefit for you at this stage because you had to do all of those things before that if you go to a to a bigger market where there may be more opportunities that maybe that puts you ahead of an artist who doesn't know how to do that who doesn't know really how to promote themselves yeah somewhat it gets me on a on a, on a level where shit like if it's a small venue or not well yeah, I just have more experience. You know what I'm saying? I have a lot more experience and a lot of, like, I'm not throwing no shade at nobody, but I, when I feel like, when I'm on stage, I feel like I have experience. And that's and that comes from me doing a whole bunch of shows in Portland and stuff like that and and, have, and having a lot of practice. So when I go out to Chicago, they say, like, he's from Portland, but he's giving us a show, like, he's up there with the, the best of the Chicago artists. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's what's up, man, chopping up with Vinny Dwayne. So the... I've heard from I've heard from other folk uh, who are not from Portland, who are from other cities, that Portland is looked at as a a great place for music, um, for for creating artists who are just so skilled and talented. And then I've had an opportunity to see that. Do you think, based on your your personal experience right now, and even with what you just expressed? Do you think that it'll ever change where these artists who come up here, who are talented, who create great art, mm -hmm. um, would ever be able to thrive here in their own city? Yeah, I think it's going to change. With all this gentrification going on mm -hmm. and, and and money that's being poured into the city. And, and I feel like Portland, the bigger Portland gets, I feel like the more recognition uh, artists are going to get. I feel like it's at some point it's gonna change. Like, I don't I don't know when, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think it's gonna change eventually. Yeah, yeah. But right now I'm I gotta get out and just go get go where it's at right now. I feel and you. I gotta connect. And... I feel you. Okay, so I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yes. As you are, as you're um, making a move. Yeah, I'm in my words, temporary move because we expect for you to come back to Portland. Yeah, I'm pterodactyl. <laughs> I'm gonna fly, fly, fly wherever I gotta go. Um, who should people be checking for? Uh, Port artists in Portland that people need to be checking for. They need to be checking for my capes, but you know what I'm saying my capes is out there. That's my big brother, man. Let that do. Um, Maze, you know what I'm saying Kome grew up with Maze too. You know he's from St. John's too. I, bro, his so, live set. When I when I seen him perform at um what's it called uh, uh Kelly's Olympian the other day oh, the thesis, I was yeah. zoned into his live set I'm like what the fuck because at first when he was performing he used to have all his homies and stuff on stage like that and I was feeling that too but it was just like kind of seemed like crowded and I didn't get to like I didn't get to see Ko May you know what I'm saying I, mean, I didn't get to see Maze Maze Chroma um I've seen a group of people, kind of like Wu Tang type thing, which I'm okay with it. But right. but when I saw Maze by himself, and then he had his homies in the crowd, and his homies was singing his lyrics, and every, everything was raw hip hop. Yeah. He was like throwing free, like the beat a drop. He throw a free. It was Renee's birthday. He dropped the beat drop. He a freestyle something to say happy birthday, Renee. Right, and right. Then the beat come back in, and then everybody going crazy and stuff like that. And his his demeanor and his and his his um his uh. Just his whole presence, you know what I'm saying? I was really attracted to that, and and I think Maze is gonna be something very special, yeah, very yeah. special. 
And he's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good Funny dude. Funny dude, too. Humble. Um, yeah. Puts in work. Yeah. Yeah. He always put in work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was, like, grinding when I was putting out Solitary, and he was, like, a couple of grades younger than me. Yeah. And... And I always seen him like, okay, he like, he's putting in work. You know what I'm saying? I thought that I was the only cat coming out of St. John's. You know what I'm saying? Just dropping tight shit. But right. he was like, he was like putting putting work in. And I seen, I always seen him. But we never really worked together. But we we grew up together. We friends. Like that's like family. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, and 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 you're right. Capes has been um really pushing his pushing his art for a minute and mm-hmm. has um. Grown as an artist, grown as an MC, you can hear it in his writing. Mm. I'm really looking for Concrete Dreams to drop. Yeah, me you know, too. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a pretty amazing yeah project when it drops. Yeah, he's gonna. Uh, it's probably gonna be like album of the year in Portland. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would not doubt it. Yeah, I would not doubt it, man. Yeah. I got another one coming up, so I'm gonna have to box with that nigga on this one. Okay, <laughs> all right, we gonna look for that. We gonna look for that. Now, now you and Mike actually just dropped a single together. Hell yeah. Um. <laughs> Speak on that right quick, man, because it was funny. I was speaking to someone. Uh, well, I was speaking. To, I, actually, I was in conversation with Brookfield Deuce again. Yeah. And uh, what, what do you say? <laughs> you kind of went in on that verse, B. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to speak my truth. Yeah. 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 Got to. And oh. Brookfield texted me too, and when he when he heard this shit, he yeah. texted me, and he yeah. already he knew. And I'm glad that he feels where I'm coming from, and and. I'm glad, like, you know what I'm saying? You don't really got to take sides on anything, but when you when you hear somebody's passion, then you're going to be like, okay, I can feel where you're coming from, man, stuff like that. And he's a good good dude, man. He, like, he shines a lot of light. He's from Oakland, and he shines a lot of light on North Portland. And, like, one of our close homies died that we all grew up with, EJ. He made a post about him, you know what I'm saying? My eyes teared up when I saw that because it's like, damn, like, this love that we have in this community in the North community is real and outsiders can feel that too. And it's not, it's not, you don't always get that. You know what I'm saying? Usually artists come out here and they just want to hop in the scene where people are popping and they're cool. You know what I'm saying? But in the North, we was never looked at as cool. And I feel like him giving us that recognition is dope. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to Brookfield. You my nigga, man. It's a good dude for real, for real. On the line with with, with Vinny, Vinny Dwayne. So, but as far as like those that song though, Mike sent me the um Mike sent me the beat, and when I heard the beat, I already knew that I was gonna be reckless on there. <laughs> you know, I already know I was gonna be reckless, and the stuff that I'm talking about is um is uh it's just a lot of the shit that I. Is the beginning of the verse comes from like me feeling like people look at my craft and they take it as like <clears throat> they take it as like I'm not a dude who's just uh using music as an outlet rather than going out into the streets and being, you know what I'm saying, and doing irrational stuff. Like when I when I make music, regardless of how big I am, like my music comes from a place of like honesty and, and 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 loyalty to my fans and stuff like that. So when I get people that talk to me and, and they say, Vinny, you can't um you can't do you can't um you're not gonna make it if you talk about the North. You know what I'm saying? You you're not gonna make it talking about St. John's. First you gotta get people to, that that likes you and then when you got people around that's coming up to me saying that type of shit, it just it frustrates me because I'm not even so Ain't nobody really even supposed to be hearing me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I when I first started rapping, everybody was like making fun of me. They was laughing. Like, what? Do, like, what are you talking about? Like, he's weak. You know what I'm saying? I go through a whole. I got booed off stage. You know what I'm saying? I I I did it. Um, when I was in eighth grade. I got up on stage and and I and I was in this talent show and I was trying to like, I thought I was spitting some heat. You know what I'm saying? And I get up there and rap and like thirty seconds into the song, everybody's laughing. And and they tell me to get off stage pretty much like I can't even be in a talent show. And, and that traumatized me to a point where it's like I almost gave up back then. And so it's like now that people are actually listening to me and and like and, and, and feeling that my music is genuine and it comes from a place of me just wanting to express myself and to get people that says like things like 
you got to stop doing what you're doing pretty much to be accepted by the world. That frustrated me to a point where it's like, okay, I'm about to be reckless and and speak how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And and that's where that came from, the beginning of the verse. And it's like I'm going, I'm going to do what I do regardless. And if people gravitate towards it, then they're going to gravitate towards it. I'm not trying to be liked by everybody. I'm saying I was never the cool kid. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was, everybody always looked, uh, looked past me and looked over me and, and stuff like that. And, and that's why I came off there. You know what I'm saying? On edge because it's like, there's people out there. You know what I'm saying? Like corny ass pr promoters that, that want to tell me how I should sound and, and, and they want to tell us that we ain't even close to blowing up. You know what I'm saying? And, and when, and that's, that is, it triggers me because you don't, you don't know our story. You're looking for numbers, you know what I'm saying? And and you don't know, like, when somebody says you ain't close to uh, blowing up, you never know that. How can you tell somebody when God, um, how, how can you tell somebody uh, if they don't know what God's plan is? You know what I'm saying? God has a different plan than everybody. Anybody could blow up tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? So it's not really about blowing up. It's never really been about blowing up for me. It's It's about staying true to who I am. And, and trying to create a fan base and, and fuck everything else and and bringing people together, you know? And that's why I came off on edge on there. That's what's up, though, man. I, I you know, and I applaud you. The, the one thing that I applaud you for is 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 just that, being true to you. I think we live in a, we live in a time as a people, regardless of what it is that you do, whether you're an artist or whether you're a civil servant or whether you're a parent, where there's a lot of peer pressure. Yeah. And, people succumb to that peer pressure because the goal oftentimes is getting on and I'll do whatever it takes to get on. Yeah. And whatever that means. And so I applaud you for being true to who you are and being true to your art. Um, and I think that as long as you, my opinion, uh -huh. as long as you can continue to do that and, um, uh, you know, just not get caught up in, just trying to make numbers yeah you know you're you will continue to grow and you you know your experience you speak on your experience of of having certain failures early, early on in mm -hmm. your career and you didn't give up and you yeah. you know you continue to to persevere and, and and hone your craft and hone your skills so you know that's what's up man yeah thank you and that's a story to tell again going back to the work that you're doing with youth mm -hmm. that whether they want to be an artist of any type, visual artists, um, recording artists, um, or whatever they want to do with their lives, that they're going to have setbacks, and, and and you can be that living example of how if you persevere, you can you yeah know, get to what you get to get to where you want to be. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Thank you. Um, and then just as a pure MC, from a pure MC standpoint, yeah, you kind of killed that verse. <laughs> Good luck, bro. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, so you talked a little bit about um you know, working on, working on the next project, you know, what can we expect? You can expect it to come. I think it's going to come this summer. A word? I think it's going to come this summer. Yeah. Okay. We already deep into it. Um, already called Barnett, Chris Barnett in Chicago. I told okay. him to get ready for me. That's what's up. Coming back. Uh, I've been working with tracks on it. Okay. We got, um, Yana Gita, uh, this is the hat I got on right now. He has the shop on, on Mississippi 39. 3962 North Mississippi Avenue. Okay. Yanagita means like it, it's a, a Jap it's a Japanese term and, and it means willow tree and, okay. it, and it's a family name and, and it's his brand um, that he's been uh, rocking with for a long time. It's okay. exclusively his brand in there and I think it's dope. He's helped he's helping with the project. Todd, his name is Todd and he's been a good support through everything that has been going on. Like he was there with me trying to release a scholar and he's been and he helped me with my uh, logo and stuff like that, and he's he's trying to brand me and help me out. It's kind of like it's it's kind of like an independent label type thing, yeah. but it's just off the love right now, and I'm and we just supporting each other. And he's been somebody I could look up to and and ask questions and like well, I talk about different contracts that I get, like I'm um well not contracts people are throwing ideas out like percentages and different things out there, and he kind of helps me uh, with recognizing like what's good and what's not good and stuff like that and yeah so yanagita is going to be a big part of this next project 
just and just to speak on just to speak on Yana Gita, I I've had an opportunity to work with them specifically. They did the the WTTN keychains for me. Oh yeah, and, hell yeah, that's dope. Dude, they're so such good work, solid, yeah. solid work. Quality, man. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So. I'm um, in a shop just opened, right? Just like last weekend. Yeah, last weekend. I was in there too. Uh, as soon as we lift this, uh, the blinds up, somebody, uh, a brother walked in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A yeah. black dude walks in. Yeah. So, what is this? I was like, this is a new Yanagita store. He was like, how long has it been open? I said, you just walked <laughs> right, in, bro. Right. You just walked in. And then he bought something. He bought a tank top. And he bought a pen. You know what I'm saying? And he bought, I think he bought a shirt too. That's what's up. So, some, it's, people start buying shit as soon as we lift the blinds up. That's it was a up. cool experience to be in there too, just to see. A shot being opened up on Mississippi Avenue, right? Because when I see Mississippi, I just it's kind of it's it's I don't know if sickening is the word, but it's the gentrification that's happened there is just like mind boggling, and it's just I never really thought I'd be spending a lot of time on Mississippi Avenue just right. based off of how everything's gone down. But I understand gentrification, and so yeah. But speak to that man because you know I think. I think sometimes we talk about um, we talk about things and 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 they almost become sort of clicheish. Yeah, you know everybody's talking about gentrification right. now, all over the United States. Mm-hmm. So much so that it begins to lose, I think, a little bit of its meaning. Right. So speak speak to that. You know, speak to um, speak to how it affected you individually. I think when people listen to your music, they get a sense of it. Yeah. You know, but speak to that. Yeah, um, it's affected me as a human being because my mom, who we grew up in St. John's, you know what I'm saying? And we grew up in North Portland. Mm-hmm. And my mom was renting from, from a landlord. And um, and when I, right when I went off to school, uh, the, the uh, property taxes went up. So my mom was pretty much just paying that landlord. That she was paying his property taxes. Mm-hmm. And as... as more white people move into the area, the value of that area is 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 increasing. Mm-hmm. There's more demand. There's more um, people are. It's the new spot that people want to take over. So, since people more people are moving there, the uh, property taxes are going up, mm-hmm. and so that moves my mom out. Now my mom stays in Southeast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She she uh, she had to go to. She started renting at another house in Southeast and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that just and it keeps happening over and over again. White people are coming in, you know what I'm saying, taking a house. It's like how can you have community in an area where people white people are coming in, staying there for a month, flipping a house and then getting the fuck up out of there, you know what I'm saying? There's no community. So it's like people are just uh they're just taking and taking and taking from 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 those who who grew up there and, and had that had those relationships with everybody in the neighborhood and stuff like that. Mm. And and that's just that's how it's affected me. All it's happening to all my friends and stuff like that. And, and soon, sooner or later, it's all gonna it's all gonna be gone. You know what I'm saying? And but, but you are by you um, building with the youth. Mm-hmm. By you being in the community, you're keeping that community growing, and I you're feel, educating people how to do that. I feel like yeah. I feel like. Um, I feel like the soul of it mm-hmm. is there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and us that we uh, us that grew up there know what it what it is, what it re- what it really was. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna automatically know when you hear North Portland, we we gonna know what North Portland we talking about. We're not talking about the the uh, folks coming in that's flipping houses and stuff like that. We are talking about the community that was there. Right. So it comes down to a point where it's like, what's more important, community or or uh, and and yeah, and stuff like I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I mean, I, 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 it is it is hard to put into words. I think unless um, you have that personal experience, oftentimes, and what you've expressed um, is yeah, that's it's, that's definitely a hard thing to a hard thing to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned earlier, sort of when you were talking about describing your music, and you you said ah, you know sort of conscious. Like I look at it as yeah, like more than sort of conscious, mm-hmm. like conscious. Do you feel like that has a negative connotation nowadays? Because I grew up in an era where there was, I I gravitated towards conscious hip hop. Yeah. But you had so many different 
in my words, subgenres. You there was a smorgasbord. So if you was in the conscious hip hop, you could go listen to PE. You could go listen to Tribe. You can go listen to De La. If you wanted to hear some heavier, harder, you could go listen to Ice T. You could go listen to NWA. You could listen to MC8. You know, if you wanted to, uh, I mean, you just you just had those options. And um, now people say that it doesn't exist, and I I, I disagree because I think it does exist. But you have to go digging for it now. But the average the average rap music fan. I'm listening. Let me take my shirt off. Yeah, yeah. I'm in my sweater. So, yeah. <laughs> Not my shirt. Hold on. The average rap music fan um, doesn't necessarily see see it that way. They don't realize that you have to, in a sense, you got to go digging for um, what you're what you're looking for. What what subgenre of music that you're looking for. So, as an artist who is who is gaining recognition, as an artist who's getting love, and 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 we, you know. When, in my opinion, the average person who thinks of rap music doesn't necessarily think about people want to turn up, people want to party, they want to have a good time, and yeah, that's a part of it. So, do you feel like that's a that, that there's a negative connotation associated with conscious hip hop? There has been, I feel like there people are starting to make it seem like negative. But uh, when I when I okay, let me just do it like this when. Somebody says conscious rap to me. Mm-hmm. Let me think of what I think of. First thing I think of, I think of uh, Most Def. Mm-hmm. I think of Talib Kweli. Mm-hmm. I think of uh, Common. Um, I think of, I think of, uh, I think of Tupac. Even like, I think of. I feel like there's. I don't. Nowadays, well, not even nowadays. When, when Biggie is conscious to me, you know what I'm saying? Anybody that's. I don't know. There's nothing. I don't think there's nothing wrong with just having a, a an, an area of consciousness in in your sound. I feel like everybody is conscious. I mean, I don't know. I think I don't really necessarily know what conscious rap is, to be honest with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean that's deep. Yeah. That's deep because, again, I think I I see the. Um, in my words, crossover of music, of you know, crossover of genres, and then within within genres, crossover of subgenres, mm-hmm. and I think that there was a time where artists would be called out for, wait a minute, what are you making a song like that for? Like that's not what you do, and I don't think that's the case so much nowadays. I think nowadays artists are comfortable being human human on their records. Yeah. And none of us are always in the same lane in our lives. You know, we have good days, we have bad days. We we want to have fun. We want to be thoughtful. Um, and I think now artists are more conscious of that on their records. Yeah. In your opinion, as an artist, as someone who has a platform, do you do you ever worry about that? That being said, do you ever worry about hmm? Put this out there. How how is that going to impact people? Not not impact how people think about me. Just how that's going to impact people. Yeah, sometimes I do. Yeah, I have this song called like. I have a song called I I haven't released it. I just wrote it. It's, a, it's called I Want to Choke This Bitch, and I feel like with the image that I've, who I am out there now. I think it'd make people be like, "What is what the hell is any doing with this title on this song?" But it's 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 a storytelling song of me dealing, being in a relationship with somebody that was like, you know, what I'm saying it was a crazy relationship that I was in. And a lot of my friends and people know that I was in this relationship, mm-hmm. and it was just crazy. And what came out of me on this song was like me feeling like I was I've reached the point of wanting to choke somebody, but. I was, but it's, it's kind of conscious, but it like, I feel like with a label, with, with a conscious label, mm-hmm. you have to be politically correct mm-hmm. sometimes. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, but then again, sometimes what is politically correct? 
to what somebody's feeling. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. And, then, like, I would put a song out like that, and people would be like, uh, oh, he's being disrespectful towards women and stuff like that. And he's, But it's just how I'm feeling and, and how, you know what I'm saying, like, even though, like, they call this, that's a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about on the next project mm-hmm. with tracks is, like, it's like people seeing me as a scholar. I've I've built myself up to be the scholar, but but it's like I'm no like I don't have everything figured out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I wild out sometimes. Yeah. I I say crazy shit on Twitter sometimes, and and I'm I'm not perfect as a human being. And when when I say scholar, I mean and and what scholar means to me is. Um, <clears throat> just somebody who's trying to trying to understand himself and society as as best as possible. You don't have to go to college, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just want to like explore and and be curious and and get on a be on a journey. Like like you're a scholar if you're if you in your mind you're on this journey. And you're trying to grow every day and you're trying to meditate and you're trying to like journal. You you you're, you're talking to yourself like. You're writing to yourself. You, you know what I'm saying, and that's what a scholar means to me, you know. And and people will hear scholar and then be think about like books and stuff like that, and like conscious, like all that. But what it really means is like it's a feeling type thing. It's spiritual spirituality. Does that answer your question? It does. It does because I think that that is. I mean, I don't have Webster's in front of me, but I do think that that's what scholarly is, right? I mean, you're you're studying. You're you're seeking knowledge, mm-hmm. um, and when you're seeking knowledge. If you if you're on that journey to seek knowledge, you're constantly. It does impact you. It does impact the way that you look at things. It does impact the way that you respond to things. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's hard because when you're in the public light, and when you have an album called the Saint John Scholar, yeah, it does give people a certain connotation of who you are. Yeah. And then when when people have an opportunity to listen to to your music, um, again, anybody who's familiar with me knows I'm. You know, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of the Golden Era. I'm a huge Native Tongue fan. I love De La Soul, mm-hmm. and it was so interesting when De La put De La Soul is dead out. The whole thing was everybody's like, "Oh, Daisy Age, oh they're like you know the mm-hmm. hippies or whatever," and they were like, "Nah, we ain't no hippies, man. Y'all just don't know." Right. <laughs> Be- but that again, I think, is a part of um, being human on record, being an artist, making art. Um, I think that we all, anyone who has a platform, we all have a certain level of responsibility with that platform, mm-hmm. um, and utilizing many, many platforms to do things like that, like like you're doing right now. Express this is what this is the meaning behind that song. This is where I was at when I wrote that. That's mm-hmm. you know this is what's behind that. So it's just interesting to I think get that perspective mm-hmm. because I don't think we always get to do that. I think when we, you know, when we stream that album. That's where it ends. I listen to that song; it has an influence on me. But that's that's where it ends. And yeah, um, there's so much music out there right now that I think it makes it difficult to really get into get into that music and digest it and see where you know where's where's that artist coming from with that yeah that they're putting out there. So hell yeah, Vinny Duane live on Cliff Notes. Um, the al if the album drops in the summer, mm-hmm. will there be a will there be any um, any any tour associated with that? I don't know. It depends on the situation. I get it right now. I just I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna be in Chicago, Chicago working. You know what I'm saying? And if anything comes up, if any of my off, I, any opportunities present, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get on tour. That's what I want to do. Yeah, I got to get on tour. Yeah, yeah. I want to go. I want to get on a legit tour. You know, and if it's opening, you know what I'm saying? It's probably gonna be opening. But I just want to see the. I just want to see what it's like. To actually just get out there and be an artist yeah. for once, because I was in when I was like, I've been back for a year and a half, and I've been working with the kids. You know what I'm saying? I've been giving to the to the community, and I've I've been there. Like when I any job that I do, I want to put my hundred percent in. Any job that I feel like it's a part of me, I want to give it my hundred yeah. percent. And and I did that with Step Up, and and I had that relationship with everybody, and and um now I want to give. And when I was in Chicago before, I was in school. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to, I was in no, like, I was barely a B student in college, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 
I made it through, yeah. and now I had to give a lot of time to that. And, I, and music was kind of the second thing. Yeah. This next time around, when I go to Chicago, I'm just gonna focus on straight music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind. I'm gonna get into the scene. I'm gonna connect with everybody that you know. what I'm saying all my homies, them people, they come on to come up right now. I'm gonna connect with them. My homegirl, Ambi Lyrics. Um, yeah, Chris Barnett, who who's the head engineer of Young Chops, um, Chop Squad Records. You know what I'm saying? So he's so when I get there, I'm probably gonna be in the studio with like Chief Keith and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's right. it's not really like it, you would just wouldn't expect it. But I'm pretty sure you're gonna see a Facebook picture with me and Chief <laughs> Keith. But uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna surround myself with the right people and like really pour my heart into this music and. And the next project, I, and and I and me and Ty was talking about it like last night. We was talking about. I was telling him I'm gonna, I want to name the project Duality, mm-hmm. Duality. Um, and that's gonna, and that's me. What I was just saying about being a scholar, they see me as like you know what I'm saying some a lot of people see the positive guy, the scholar. You know what I'm saying he got the full right scholarship and he's got his head on straight. But there's this whole other side of me that I feel like. Uh, I I want to express and I want people to understand because it's like I, I, I'm battling so many different things like in my head you know what I'm saying I some days I'm the super positive guy and some days I'm off the Hennessy you know what I'm saying I'm just wilding out you know what I'm saying and I'm just not my highest self but I'm in my environment and I'm around people that I love and grew up with and I'm just being, just being who I want to be, just being free, and it's hard to um, mask that all the time. But that's also why I'm isolating myself because I have to get away from that environment and I have to focus on on me. and And through my experiences last year, I feel like I've gained enough, exp- like gained enough, like juice to put out the next project that I that I really feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. Vinny Duane on Cliff Notes. Um, as folk who are listening to this, who are maybe um, in the Portland scene, who have a goal of trying to build themselves up and build up their career, what advice would you give them? You know, in Portland, I'm in Portland, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on. Or people who are in the city who um, want to figure out how to make it a more receptive place for the hip hop community, you know, as an artist, what would be your recommendation? What can we do to to sort of build um, on the scene and take it to the next level? Just get out there, don't be afraid to take risks, keep being creative, find different ways to to um to get your stuff shared on on the internet. Um and know your self worth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if don't be paying everybody to get up on a on a show. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't you like you know what I'm saying, create your own shows. Get out there, try to find a smaller venue, bring your own crowd out, you know what I'm saying? And pass out your own flyers, get out there, put in the groundwork. You don't have to, you don't always have to open up for a hot artist to have a good show. And have a small intimate one and, and, and own it, you know what I'm saying? And because a lot of these promoters are out here are like shady to me. And I feel like they always trying to find a way to come up and and take from you and make you feel less of an artist if you don't reach a certain amount of tickets and stuff like that don't don't fall in that trap like i, I feel like it's cool if, i mean I, I don't even think it's a fuck that i don't think it's cool at all do your own thing don't don't pay off promoters to open up for fucking whoever comes here you know what i'm saying like just do it yourself and get out there take a leap take a leap of faith you know what i'm saying that's what's up that's yeah. what's up. Vinny Duane on Cliff Notes. Yo, um, I always want to give folk an opportunity to um, to let people know how to how to follow follow their path. So I know you do a social media thing. So let everybody know if they wanna if they wanna connect with you on social media, what's the way to do that? It's at V Duane, V D E W A Y N E. I'm on Facebook too, Vinny Duane. Um, um yeah, Instagram, V Duane, same thing as Twitter. Yeah, check me out. Follow me. That's what's up. That's what's up. Any uh, any final words for for your massive audience, all those fans, all those Vinny Dwayne fans out there? Um, uh, 
yeah, just look out for the next project. Um, keep keep uh, supporting, showing love. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody that um, shows um, love on Facebook and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Check out the new record with me and Mike Capes. Um, yeah. That's about it. That's what's up. Hell yeah. That's what's up. Well, brother, like I said, man, it's been it's been a long time coming, and um, it's really been cool. I mean, the things that I mentioned earlier, I mean, that's from the heart, man. It's been cool to see you put in work and do the things that you've done creatively. Um, and then it's, for me, um, it's been even better to see the work that you've done with the community, um, the fact that you came back to your home and, and gave back to the community just like folk gave to you, you know, paying it forward like that. I think that's really, really dope. And I think that's one of the reasons that you're, in my opinion, that you ha you're having the blessings that you're having because... Um, you're feeding back into that into that river of positivity. So, you know, blessings to you on your journey. And God willing, I ain't going nowhere. So, you know, next time you're in Portland, we got a link for, for sure. Hell yeah. I'm going to be back with the project too. That's what's up. Hell yeah. That's what's up. All right, y'all. Another episode of Cliff Notes, man. Follow my man, Vinny Duane, all over social media. Look for the next project um, and uh, and continue to support, support, support. All right, y'all. Until we meet again. Peace.